What's up, everybody? AJ Rights Crypto here. Super excited to get into today's show. It is Wednesday, April 3rd. Thank you for being here, joining me with me today. Oh, man, today's show is pretty sick. Today's show is pretty sick. I'm pretty excited. Uh, first of all, we have a couple stories I want to talk about. We're going to talk about the charts. We're going to talk about all the all, all the things. But, 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 I do have Abdul from Gora Network sitting backstage. I'm going to do the first 10, 15 minutes, and then we will bring him on stage. What they're doing at Gora is pretty, pretty awesome. You guys know that I have a soft spot for oracles. You guys know I like oracles. You know I like Chainlink. I have been vocally bullish on Pyth, on Solana ever since that has come out. And, you know, oracles are the beating heart of crypto. You know, so essentially, if you're a beginner, if you don't know, oracles is how you get real world data onto the blockchain. Okay. And that's why Chainlink early on blew up like it did because everyone wanted a piece of what they were doing because they needed that service to be able to do X, Y, and Z. That's why you saw partnership after partnership after partnership. It seems like everyone is partnered with Chainlink, and that is because they're Oracle and they are the other people need them to feed re real world data into their blockchain, whether it's data feeds, um, you know, price feed, the temperature, scores of game, anything, any real world empirical data. That's what oracles do. And you realize, you know, pretty early on how important this is and how, you know, also you have to understand, I believe it's something to the effect of like 92% of the Oracle market share in crypto is dominated by chain link. That's a pretty big number. So any other Oracle that comes out that can do a good job and, you know, you think, think banks, right? Like think big banks with smaller banks have to do these extra promotions, these extra things to, to get your attention, to prevent you from going to Wells Fargo, to prevent you from going to chase. So, you know, the small banks have extra things that, that you can do to, you know, in, to increase your profits or to get a better ROI or whatever. It's just like that. But with oracles, because they have to, they have to have a bunch of blinking lights saying, Hey, look at what we can do. Look at what we're capable of to to get you away from chain link and into the new and, and thing that's coming up and that's why you know i'm always very optimistic to talk about oracles and uh, uh if anytime there's a project that is an oracle that actually looks like they know what they're doing i'm going to be talking about that so uh you know I, like i said i i'm obviously big on chain link i'm obviously have been vocally big about Pyth, and you know i am more than happy to speak to abdul from gora here in a couple minutes so big shout out to him thank him for being here uh, there's already about 80 people in the house already this Wednesday morning. Smash the like button if you haven't already. Subscribe to the channel. Let's get into today's show. Got so much to talk about. First of all, let's do a quick little overview of the of the prices. We got Bitcoin, you know, back back up a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to talk about this on the charts. But I I was during the dump and during the second leg of the dump. You know, obviously you're going to get emotional. You're going to get a little pessimistic. You're not going to be, you know, feeling the most bullish in the world. But now that things have kind of settled and certain support resistance lines have been held on certain charts, I'm a little bit less worried than I necessarily was when it was all happening. But, you know, we are going to look at the charts at the second end of the show after the interview, if you want so my insight on TA. Uh, let's take a quick look at the gainers and the losers to isolate that volatility uh, let's take a quick peek at the top 300 here. The Joe Bowden coin, Geo Bowden, 64.7%. This thing is up significantly from when we were talking about it on Mario Nafal's roundtable just last week. It was at 230 billion. Now it's at 324. This thing is absolutely ripping. Understand that the election, obviously, in November, massive narrative. So this is all narrative. This is a meme coin. This is a meme coin. And it's already inside the top 300. There's also the MAGA, the MAGA coin. There's the RFK J token. Those guys, you know, are actually pretty cool. I talked to them on Mario's show as well. So keep an eye out for these election-based meme coins. Very interesting narrative. Also have a story about the election here I'm going to share with you in a couple minutes. Uh, yeah, let's look at the top 100. All right, so here we go. Uh, Athena, don't know what that's that's a that's a new addition to the top 100, up 38 percent. We have Flare, BitGet moving up, Crow, oh, Crypto.com. Hey, shout out the Crow, love to see it. And Jupe up 
3% back to 170. Amazing to see that. Actually caught a short yesterday on Jupe in the Telegram group. And then it has actually broke back through that support resistance and back up through the next support resistance. So basically what I did for the Telegram group, I might have that chart pulled up. Uh, let me see. Okay, so actually perfect. Let me make this one yellow. I know you can't see it yet. All right, so this was basically the idea with the jupe trade yesterday. So we were like, uh, we were over, we were over here. All right, and basically I had an alarm at one sixty and alarm at one sixty seven. So one sixty seven, one sixty. All right, so I posted it over here. This alarm went off there. So, you know, the bottom alarm goes off. You're obviously going to short. All right. And then, you know, you obviously have to pay attention to where it reversed at this support resistance here. So Jupe actually held support resistance at a dollar fifty one. But if you caught the short from when the alarm went off, oh, uh, you know, you only made eight, seven, six point nine percent on that trade. Shout out to anybody in the Telegram group who caught that short. It reversed at support resistance. And then we actually came back up. If you long based off the idea that I had, uh, you know, you also made 6.3% to the upside. I wonder if anybody in the group caught both of those trades. I know many people caught the short down and were very pleased with that position that I posted. Uh, also, the visible range volume profile is not loading. I do have it pulled up, but it's not, it's not loading. But I want you guys to pay attention that right, what I was drawing here, here, let's, let me get rid of this so I can show you what I'm talking about. What I was drawing here is that the volume right here, it, it went away and picked up over here, which is why I was saying that if we break this level to look for a quick move up to here, because there's not much volume there. So, you know, I think a, 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 the idea of uh, Jupe continuing up into this volume that's not loading for some reason uh, isn't probably the worst idea. I think there could be another... Uh, you know, maybe another 5% out of that trade. Uh, it is kind of coming down on the very small time frame. Maybe even look for a bounce off of 167. But, uh, you know, I, I'm giving you the alpha the day after the Telegram group gets it. Have an alarm at 160 and 167 on the Jupe chart. You will probably make some money off that idea of support resistance. So uh, shout out to anybody in the Telegram group who, has, who won that trade. Been nailing trades in the Telegram group. If you want to sign up, send me an email. It's down below ajalphagroup at gmail.com. Over 80 people, um, over 80 people already in the group. Absolutely killing it. Love to see it. Hey, Ellie, Ellie's back. She's alive. She's alive. Love to see it. Glad, glad, uh, glad you're here. Uh, Lee F, AJ, what is this core coin? Uh, so the core coin, oh man, that's what that's the one that just kept going and going and going. So basically, they use a, a, a consensus mechanism called Satoshi Plus. It does sound a little scammy, Ben said, but I, I agree with him, it does sound a little weird. But they use a consensus mechanism called Satoshi Plus that that uses uh, like the Bitcoin mining hash and the EVM, so it's like a it's like the best of both worlds, the best of both worlds in Bitcoin and Ethereum. And uh, it has actually has a lot of institutional attention. Hence the move from one dollar to over four dollars. Let's, let's take a quick look at that chart, actually, while while it's while it's on my mind here. Core. I know you can't see it yet. One moment. All right. Boom. All right. Looking at the let's look at the two hour. Yeah. So look, this thing just once it started going, it just kept on going. All right. I mean, even from a little pause at 166 up 110 percent, uh, dude, this thing just has no chill whatsoever. Uh, even if you kind of zoom in on smaller time frames on this, you're definitely going to want to pay attention to this level right here. It did wick above it, but, you know, but the bodies of the candles have been rejected two separate times here and here. This level on core is at four dollars and twenty three cents. Certainly alarm up at that level because if this thing comes rocking uh, i mean you could try to long to that level uh you know that would actually be a very big move if you long to that level uh anticipating rejection uh man this thing and, and it's staying above the the 50 ema on the 15 minute chart so i, I don't see why i mean, could very well continue with that kind of attention uh things like that just keep going sometimes no, I had a super chat up here somewhere. All right, Papa Elf, $10 super chat. Thanks for the super chat, Papa Elf. I do appreciate you. Hi, AJ. Hi, Papa Elf. Question about 
uh, MEXC exchange. I'm lever leveraging there with VPN, but I worry about cashing out and all the IRS stuff. What would you recommend? Uh, well, certainly, I don't know why you're trading there. You certainly should be trading on Femex. I have no issues when it comes to trading on Femex. It's a very easy, intelligent place to trade. It's very simple trading on Femex. Everything's very cut and dry. I also have a Femex tutorial to teach you how to leverage trade, specifically leverage trade on Femex in that tutorial that I just put out last week. Definitely head over and check out that check out that uh, that tutorial. And and with and with Femex, the way it works is. Uh, you need a VPN when you sign up, but if you like forget to turn your VPN on and you log in to Femex, it won't boot you out. You only need it to sign up. And once you sign up, you can go there with or without one. But I would always suggest anytime you're trading crypto for security reasons to always use a VPN. I mean, I have a VPN on right now, right here, right now. I, I, my, my computer, my phone, if I'm doing anything, my VPN's on and that, and that is a. You just should do that. You should do that. So, uh, my I, Papa Elf, my recommendation to you is the Femex link right down, right down there in the description. Appreciate you. All right. So, um, let me check the chat here. Oh, am I still bullish on Quant on QNT? Yeah, I am. Am I a little bit worried about it? Yeah, I've been vocal about that. Uh, I, I don't think their marketing push is anything close to where it needs to be. Uh, but I still think it's a rock solid project with rock solid fundamentals and it has some of the best tokenomics in crypto, which is what really attracted me to it, you know? So, um, you know, I, I think it's going to be fine, but it, it, it has felt a little suppressed compared to other coins. I still, I have not sold my quant allocation. I'm still holding my quant allocation long-term, no intention on selling it, but it's not like I've been constantly chomping at the bit to buy more of it. I've been buying into more projects that have been a little bit more volatile. Um, shout out to my guy, Ricky Burris. I appreciate the positive words. Uh, Gora. Okay. So Gora is trading on Mexi. I mean, I, I, can, I, I, it's, I do have Abdul here uh, and I will bring him on stage in a little while. Maybe I will have to connect him and my people at Femex to get Gora on uh, on the better leverage trading exchange because you know i i could get it you can get it on dfly which is i know on, on algorand but uh in terms of exchanges that's actually a good question to ask him as well where people can can access get the accessibility to that all right so going to check out a couple stories here and then we will bring abdul from gora on going to start off with this one uh is andrew tate preparing a multi-billion dollar bitcoin bet he did put a tweet out buying 10 million of Bitcoin right now. Yes. No. Let's actually check in on that tweet. And um, one second, let's check in on that tweet and see what uh, Andrew and and see what the vote is. All right. Andrew Tate. Let's share. I do want to point something out about Andrew Tate, everybody follows you follows you that's crazy that's crazy when i realized that i almost fell out of my chair he has followed 726 people is nine million followers somehow your boy your boy made the cut let's go let's go all right so let's check out this uh let's check out this vote here probably a little bit further down at this point um, 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 um. that's a sweet car um Okay, damn. Okay, there we go. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay, so it said yes and yes. I thought it said yes and no, but obviously everybody's saying yes. So, hey, maybe Andrew Tate is buying 10 million of Bitcoin right now. I did misread it when I first read it. I thought it said yes and no. So, yes and yes. Even better. Even better. Shout out to Andrew Tate. Uh, I have been, it's actually funny that Andrew, Andrew follows me because. I have not been the most bullish on a lot of his takes in terms of like how he treats women, for instance. And he's like, that kind of stuff. It's just kind of like, come, come on, bro. Like be, be nice to the ladies, you know, be nice to the ladies. But I actually, I, I agree with his, his take on a, on a lot of other things. Obviously I don't like that. He, everybody's in crypto is a nerd, blah, 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 that kind of stuff. I, I feel like if I had a conversation with him, I could change his mind on that. Cause there are people in crypto that, you know, he thinks like it's like the lazy way out. It's like a it's the the a cheap way to make money. Like, yeah, 
do some people in crypto hit that crypto lottery and turn 10,000 into a couple million dollars? Yes, that happens. Is that the exception, not the rule? 100%. Most people I know that are crypto millionaires put in the work in a big way. I mean, like, look how much I wake up early every day and do all this stuff. Like you can't say for one second that my approach here is lazy. So, uh, you know, I'm going to, maybe, maybe I'll have a chance to interview him one day. Maybe I will have to, uh, interview him one day. You never know. You never know. Awesome. Awesome. Um, this is a pretty interesting story as well. And we are in Q2 now we are in Q2 crypto hack explosion, over $500 million stolen in the first quarter of 2024. Damn, it's a 54% increase compared to 2023. Uh, you know, the major breaches include the co-founder of Ripple's $112 million lost and Bit4X $56.5 million exit scam. Hey, this is why I say use a VPN. Protect yourself in any way you can with your private keys. Make sure you are physically writing them down. Do not screenshot them. Do not save them in the notes of your phone. You want that physically written down and that's it. Preferably stored in a fireproof safe. All right. So, you know, use a VPN, protect yourself. You know, it, it is that the, this part, this is the part of crypto when, you know, I, I, I hate the idea of most regulation, but when I see this, I, I, I shrug my shoulders and say, yeah, that ain't going to last forever. Uh, you know, that, that this part is not going to last forever. Interesting story here. The U.S. United States approached Cardano Foundation to build a blockchain voting platform. Very, very interesting to hear this. Um, here's someone here from Cardano Foundation, uh, Grigard. We have been approached by a couple states in the U.S. saying, hey, can you help us do a lightweight blockchain solution to make voting more transparent and accountable? Uh, wow, that's actually very, very interesting. Uh, you know, I think that Cardano would be a perfect project to do something like that. That's from the CEO, Frederick Gregard. That's a very strange spelling for that last name. But uh, man, I am actually very interested to see that. And it's interesting that the states are coming to them saying, hey, can you help us? Not Cardano going to them saying, hey, we can do this thing for you. They have come to Cardano to ask. That's pretty cool. Not only that, man, this whole thing with the mail-in ballots and all like, get, get out of here. Shut the front door. Shut the front door with the mail-in ballots. Uh, I, I think that moving forward, very serious things like elections, it should start at elections and kind of snowball from there. Uh, they need to be completely transparent. They need, they need to be completely accountable. You know how many dead people voted last election? You know what I mean? Like this is the kind of stuff when I'm when I like slow clap, slow clap because blockchain, this is the impl implications that we're going to need to prove to the world why this why this is here and what we're doing so that would actually be amazing so um uh, um, 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 um. all right check in the chat i got one more quick little story and then we will bring up abdul from gora network uh there's the story right there shiba inu march burn achieves 23.3 x monthly rate increase oh uh, what too long didn't read the shiba Inu community burned over 15 billion tokens in March, marking a significant increase to the monthly burn rate. The largest, con excuse me, mm. the largest contribution to March, March's burns comes from the Shiba Inu ecosystem team, the team with two transactions totaling 13.4 billion March burn figures contrast sharply with previous months indicating a resurgence in token burns. That is pretty cool. That is pretty cool. I, I mean, especially with a token with a supply that big. I mean, what what is Shiba's supply? Let's look at that really fast uh, before we go to the next segment of the show. Let's go to Coin Gecko. Uh, I think Shiba's top. Yep, top third. Wow, thirteenth by market cap. That is absolutely insane. I love to see it though. All right, so we got a market cap of sixteen billion. Uh, circulating supply five nine. So million billion trillion so 589 trillion oh my goodness yeah so when you compare it to the complete circulating supply uh you know what was it again 15 billion tokens 15 billion tokens doesn't really hold a candle to you know 100,000 
hundred million, hundred billion, five hundred trillion. Uh, you know, fifteen billion isn't that much, but you do got to take into account, you know, how many tokens there are, and then also the the total supply. You know how you know we're you know fifty eight, fifty nine percent of the way there in terms of getting the you know, of, of being fully vested. So you know it does have a very long way to go. I do uh, prefer tokens that have total supplies. I know Dogecoin does not. Uh, you know there is a slight difference between them there, and it still has a long way to go in its vesting schedule. But it is cool to see that they are making an effort and uh, and burning. So yeah, half a quadrillion exactly. That is so so many tokens. So many tokens. Awesome. So shout out to the Shiba Inu community. I feel like you know last bull run. It definitely caught everybody by surprise. And both Doge and Shiba are those kinds of coins that when they start to wake up, that is like, I'm not going to hold Doge when it sat for a year, be in like a little range. But when it starts to wake up, like I said, like last week and the week before that, I bought some Doge. I bought I bought some Doge because when it wakes up, it starts to run up the hill. I, I It's hard for me to actually make a price target with Doge. Like I've said before, I don't think Doge can go to a dollar. It's possible, unlikely, but possible. But I still think that in terms of getting a couple X's from, you know, a top 10 project, uh, I, I would prefer to uh, to let to let the Doge rocket to the moon there. So amazing. So we got Luke, the Gora gang in the house. Good timing, Luke, because I am about to bring Abdul from Gora Network right up to the stage here. We're going to have a conversation about, you know, Algorand's favorite oracle. Here we go. Let's do this. I mean, make, I like this one better. Cool. Man, how are you doing today? Thank you so much for being here. What, what's new and exciting? Hey, what's up, AJ? Thanks for having me on. I've been watching your show for a while, so it's good to connect. You know, you told me about how, you know, talk really great intro about Oracle. So, you know, happy to jump into that conversation. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. So, first of all, I I, I ask everybody this because I, I need to I need to take the temperature of the room here on a scale of one yeah. to ten. How bullish are you as we inch closer to the having for the next bull run? I'm, I'm super bullish. You know, I think uh, as a Oracle project, we talk to a lot of enterprise customers, and we get to see things that are not necessarily public. And so we're talking to big companies who are starting to adopt crypto. Uh, and so when we see the people who are building on crypto um, that don't necessarily talk about it in public, we realize this is an iceberg. It's much deeper than we imagined uh, yep. in terms of adoption. Yep. A hundred percent. hundred percent. So, you know, Gora Network is built on one of my favorite blockchains, Algorand. So, so tell me, Abdul, what's it like building and being on Algorand? Yeah, Algorand is an excited one because it's really focused on enterprises, right? And so uh, working closely with the foundation, they actually uh, connect us with a lot of enterprise customers, some of them Fortune 500 companies. And so it's, it's you know, it's super technical. It's where you need mission critical software. People go to Algorand. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, you know, that's that's a really the cool thing about being here is getting to see the insights into how traditional companies are moving on to blockchain. Yep, a hundred percent. So, you know, I opened the show with that, you know, Oracle narrative. And that's something I, I really yeah. want to talk to you about because I think you were the person that actually told me that Chainlink has a 92% dominance on the or wasn't that you that told me that? Yeah, yeah. yeah so, so when you, know, you look at sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead, go ahead. No, I'll, so when you look at projects currently using an Oracle, yeah. that number is up to ninety-two percent. Uh, but when you look at the projects that need an Oracle that actually built their own solution in-house because they couldn't really find anything that works, actually like 80% of projects are using their own home-built Oracle. So right. while Chainlink is dominating people who are using an Oracle, there's so much DIY uh, people out there that are not using sort of anything. Uh, so the market share is just wide open up for grabs. And then exactly. of course, all the people who are going to be building soon are going to be looking for some, some good tech. Certainly, certainly. So, like, you know, I, I've always been uh, a fan. The Oracle narrative is a fan favorite of my audience and of, and of myself. I, I've obviously, I've been vocally bullish on Chainlink. I've been vocally bullish on Pyth. I'm a fan of Gora Network, you know, and I think being a part. So, like, what I want to say is, like, that, that comparison I made at the beginning of the show about small banks, how, like, you know, uh, the smaller banks have to do extra things to get the attention to prevent their customers going to the larger banks. So, you know, as a smaller Oracle, 
you have to work extra hard and provide extra value that necessarily isn't there from, you know, the, the biggest one on the street. So the, like, what is like Gora working on the specifically to separate yourselves from, from the crowd to try to get more of that chain link market share? Yeah. Great point, AJ. We're not going to be able to come into this market and say, Hey, here's these price feeds. Um, come switch to us that's not going to work you have to be right. innovative and uh, one of the cool things we do is you know we started off actually as a sports oracle right and if you know anything about sports every single match generates tons of data uh, and so when we ended up diversifying we had this oracle that can get large amounts of data on chain and so now what you can do is instead of just the price of bitcoin you can mm -hmm. get something like the volume 24 hour high low how many holders you know, things like that. And now you can build way more complicated DeFi apps or just in general sports, uh, insurance, things like that. Right. Wow. That's amazing. So I also, I also want to talk about, I noticed, you know, I, I look at DeFi a lot. I, I'm an Algo fan member through and through. And I noticed the Gora token has been moving. I think you're up like three X since your launch. I know you can't talk about price or anything, but do you want to like, you have anything to say about, you know, the, the progress you've made in the Gora token on Algorand? Yeah. Algorand is great because it's sort of this strong community, right? And, um, there was no Oracle before we started there and we were able to really build a, a solid connection of, of community members uh, and clients. Most of that introduced by Algorand itself. And so we, we really did, I think, well in terms of the business development for traditional companies. Um, but now we're starting to move into the more immediate need, which is like DeFi. And so, you know, we sort of have grown and we'll continue to grow our Algorand uh, product. But now our focus is going to be on, OK, uh, the bull run is here. Projects are desperately looking for uh, really high quality, sophisticated solutions, oracles in this case, uh, to help them stand out and provide a more sophisticated product than, for example, a Uniswap, just swaps or just farming. Uh, right. And I think we can are well positioned to provide the rich data that they need to have uh, way more cooler products. Yeah. And, you know, what I do want to say yeah, paying attention to Gora a little bit. That like right now, you can get you know the Gora token. I know on you know on Algorand, like on DeFi. I know it's on Mexi. I'm not sure the entire list of where you can get the Gora token, but I, I think now isn't a bad time to DCI. I know you can't talk about it, but I can. So I, I don't think right now is a bad time to get into the Gora network token because you're about to expand to Ethereum. It's just on Algorand yeah. right now, and it's about to go to Ethereum, and that accessibility is going to get blown wide open. Tell me about the Ethereum expansion of Gora Network. Yeah, so we're super excited. We just had a merger with Rosify, and they provide on-chain credit scores. So with their customer base and us launching to Ethereum, you can now sort of get DeFi apps on Ethereum, Polygon, Arbitrum, all these layer twos using us. And nice. we just had a Twitter space with Quota Finance that allows you to borrow on vesting tokens, right? So now you have tokens you bought in a pre-sale, you don't want to sell them, you can get a loan on them with, with Quota Finance and this school oh. and most of integration. So these are the type of uh, sophisticated apps that people want, uh, DGENs in many cases, uh, so we're, we're very excited for this expansion. <laughs> no, I, I think that's amazing. And, ju and just, you know, the fact that right now it's only on Algorand and it's about to open up now would be a really good time to get involved and learn more about the Gora network for 100%. And also tell me about Gora Fi. You know, you have this cross chain launch pad. Fill me in on that. Yeah. So Gora Fi is another way. We want to really kickstart. Uh, not just the Algorand narrative, but really yep. the narrative uh, across technical projects launching. We know meme coins in fashion, and I think it, in a way, will always be in fashion. But ultimately, the projects that will last bull run to bull run are these technical projects. And so, Gorify is essentially the first product that's going to be a launch pad, where it's fully decentralized. You can purchase, you know, some some token from any chain, uh, and then have it invest on a different chain. So, like an Algorand project is launching. You can pay for it with ETH or with Matic and then get your tokens uh, completely decentralized in an escrow contract, not controlled by the project's team uh, and invested to you automatically. And so this is wow. another way we're showing off the power of Gora because this launchpad uses Gora to get data from various chains uh, and to right. do that kind of stuff. So, you know, it's, it was a cool way to build something using our own product. 
Wow. Yeah, that's absolutely massive. So fill me in a little bit like on the roadmap. Like I know that there's some news coming this month. Like, can you fill me in a little bit on, you know, the, 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 the milestones for this year, like as we head forward into April? Yeah, so this month is all about our expansion. We just merged with Rosefi. That was the first step of the expansion. Okay. Second step is going to be launching sort of our smart contracts and a token on Ethereum. Uh, we are expanding accessibility, like you said. So we're going to be looking at launching on one or two new centralized exchanges. I heard nice. you give a shout out to Femex. Definitely introduce. I can us. make that happen. Uh, I can make that happen. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Great. I'll I'll, uh, I'll then, connect the dots. Yep. Yeah, for sure. And then from there on. Uh, our DeFi strategy is supercharged. We're going to be reaching out to set quite a few different ones. Uh, we're going to be doing a lot of things in the AI space. I think Gora not only is an Oracle, but it's also a computation layer. Uh, so we're going to be able to offload some of the really heavy computations that people do on chain onto our Oracle. So now you can do things like, uh, you know, decentralized computation where you get uh, some model that you want to train and get the results on chain uh, so it's, it's super technical i don't know how technical i can get on your show uh, i understand super excited for keep, that. yeah keep it on and the then, surface course, for the show yeah 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 and then now, and from there we're going to be going to many more chains cosmos is another big one uh, we're getting a lot of people asking us to come to solana uh, a lot of oh. people needing our services on there so so yeah we're there's a lot of big things coming this year someone in the chat this month Hell yeah. That that's amazing to hear that. And the the what it's April, did you say 15th, 16th? Yeah, yeah, mid April. April mid April is the day okay. for Ethereum launch, yeah. And then for the Ethereum launch. Amazing. Yeah. So you got a couple weeks, everybody. Get got a couple weeks before it goes over <laughs> to Ethereum. So I also someone said in the chat that you should launch on base next. Any plans to launch on base? Yeah, the cool thing about launching on Ethereum is you now you become it's so much easier to launch on every other chain so this exactly. ethereum one took us six months of development and testing oracles are a super complex product like to launch the algorithm product took us like two years to launch evm took us eight months now to go on polygon base arbitrum it's a matter of weeks right it's wow. the same sort of code base uh the bridges are super sophisticated we're also uh, a bridge ourselves so from arbitrum from ethereum we're going to be moving very quickly uh, Arbitrum, Polygon, Base, and so on before we decide to go off EVM to change that Cosmos. Amazing. Multi-chain is without a doubt the way to go, and you have already caught on to that. I have one more question yeah. from the chat, if you don't mind. Ogre Abroad sure. asked, can I get a loan against my GameFi token or even better yet, my NFTs? Question mark. So that is the kind of thing uh, Oracles and Gora in this case will be able to make happen for, for our customers, right? So like Code of Finance, they're allowing you to uh, borrow against vesting tokens or tokens that are not even launched yet, um, right? So now how do they get the data to do this through Oracles like us, right? So uh, I think as we partner with more of these types of uh, DeFi apps, you will be able to do this kind of sophisticated. That's where I came back to the beginning where we can't just offer price of the top coins. We have to offer uh, highly sophisticated and rich data so people can do things like this. Amazing. Amazing. Dude, I'm super bullish on it. I'm definitely going to get involved. Uh, any? How do people get a hold of you? How do, where, where can people find you? Yeah, I live on, I live in the Telegram chat. So if you ever drop in and say hi, uh, you will see me respond. Our mods are all over Discord, Twitter. You know, we post a lot on here. Um, yeah, so, you know, sh shoot me a message on Telegram and uh, happy to answer any questions you guys have. Amazing. And this right here, everybody, is the Gora Network. Uh, they have the community right here. Contact us. You can book a demo, mainnet, app, you get anything you want on chain. And also make sure you give them a follow over on Twitter. Let me click on, click on the Twitter here. There it is. Can you guys see that? Yes, you can. There it is right there. As you can see, almost 70,000 followers on Twitter. This thing is absolutely moving. You guys are well on your way. Abdul, thanks so much for being on the show. I re Oh, <laughs> thanks so much for being on the show. Any, any, <laughs> that was hilarious. Uh, any closing yeah. thoughts before uh, we go, I go to the next segment here? No, I mean, thanks for having me on. Uh, we are super excited about uh, like a lot of the upcoming things, the having this coming. Uh, so yeah, let's, let's, uh, let's ride the wave guys. Amazing. I know that I will be seeing you at Bitcoin Nashville. I'm very excited to, yeah. to meet you in person. I think I'll be, I'll meet you. I'll see you. I'll probably see you at Decipher before that. I forget the Decipher. calendar. 
Yep, Decipher. Decipher. And then maybe yeah. Rare Evo, maybe Rare Evo in in Vegas as yeah. well. I think that one's going to be a great time. Yeah, yeah for sure. Thanks again for having me on. Yep, anytime, man. Appreciate you. All right, have a good rest of your day. All right. You too. Bye. Bye. <clears throat> Amazing. Amazing. Big shout out to Abdul over at Gora Network. Those guys are, listen, I don't just bring anyone on to my show. I, I don't. I really don't. I, I have to like what you're doing. It has to be an opportunity. It has to, yeah, it has to be something that, you know, actually adds value to the audience. And when they were like, hey, let's figure something out, I was like 100% for sure. First of all, they build on Algorand. They are going multi-chain, but they started on Algorand. So that's amazing. And second of all, look, somebody right there in the chat said, Gora market cap, 2.8 million. We are so, so early. That And the fact that they're going multi-chain, they have the roadmap that they have. They're going to a lot of conferences. Abdul is giving it hell in terms of showing his face, marketing. I mean, that that's what it takes. That's what it takes. I mean, I'm not going to say it's a like a 100% play or anything like that. Nothing in crypto is a guarantee, but hard work is a guarantee. And they are putting in the work. There's no question about that. And, uh, and I'm here for it. I'm here for it. Big shout out to Abdul. Big shout out to Gora Network. And, um, you know, I just, I want to give people like that you know, an opportunity to shine. So uh, I really appreciate them coming on the show. Uh, and, and somebody asked in the chat, where can we buy, where can we buy Gora? Right, let's take a quick look at Gora really fast on CoinGecko. Let me come on over here. Uh, Gora. Gora right there. Ba, 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 ba. Okay. I mean, this thing is, it, it, it has so much potential. So much potential. Markets. Okay. It looks like Mexi. Mexi. I'm pretty sure you can get it on DFly as well. Pretty sure you can get it on DFly as well. I would double check. I'm, I'm, I would bet my bottom dollar actually that you can get it on DFly. So there you go. Uh, and I, I'm certainly going to be reaching out to my friends over at Femex to try to get them on to on there as well. So cool, cool beans. All right. Going to keep rolling on the show here. Make sure you go give my friends over at Gora Network a follow if you haven't already. We do have 175 people watching the show right here, right now. Thank you all for being here. I really appreciate it. Make sure you smash the like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. It is 1111. Make a wish. Up oh, the clock just changed. But my wish was I want to look at some charts. We need to do some TA. We got a lot to catch up on. Uh, let me click over here. All right. So render. This one has been on the list for a little while. As you can see here, it is still in this, you know, kind of descending, a slight, slightly broadening descending channel. Uh, on the oscillator, it has changed a little bit. See how it's kind of moving up, up into the VWAP, still a little bit in the red. Basically, the way I view situations like this is that you are in a downtrend until you're not. Okay. And as you can see, you know, the other way, the EMA, a little bit above the price, would not surprise me to see render push up, you know, maybe to the top of this channel here uh, before, you know, you're in a downtrend until you're not. So, do I think it's a crazy, amazing idea to long render while it's still in the down channel? No, I don't. It's only a 4% win if you get to the top of the channel. But if you look at this arrow right here on the screen, you see this alarm at 990, okay? This was this was some alpha in the Telegram group, all right? If you went short from 990 to top to bottom, you're looking at an 8.58% win there on that short. Shout out to anybody in the group that nailed that one. And, you know, now we're heading back up. So really... What you want to consider here with render and what tends to happen a lot is that this right here would be considered a point of intersection. The point where the support resistance line resistance line intersects with the upper band of the downtrend. All right. The point this point of intersection is actually tomorrow. Uh, actually, tonight at midnight, tonight at midnight will be this point of intersection. And a lot of times you will find things kind of go up and, and really end up in these areas. It, it's very common to see that happen. Uh, you know, is this a guarantee? No, it's not. But like I said, it is a 3% win to the upside if you do that. But if, you, if you're an experienced trader and you're willing to take the risk just for 3%, uh, send it, in my opinion. You can send it. 
if you if you opt to do that, I would set my stop loss a little bit below this low here, maybe right there. Uh, that's actually a pretty sketchy stop loss, to be honest with you. That's a dent of a stop loss because you want to because basically the idea on if you were to take this higher risk long is that you know you're respecting this local uptrend that started you know last yesterday that we're going to respect this local uptrend. So if your stop loss is below the local uptrend, this idea has to get blown out of the water for you to get stopped out. All right. Personally, I, I would try to time it a little bit better. I, I don't see, really see a need to rush into this long if you want to roll the dice on it. Um, but yeah, it, but we that's also, you know, what we'll do, we'll set an alarm on the stop loss. This isn't a trade I'm necessarily going to aim for, but I will set an only once alarm on this little local uptrend here and see if render respects this level. Uh, and also, if you are trying to get in on a render trade, definitely have your alarm set at that 990 level. That is still an important support resistant level. And also have your alarm set on the upper band of this downtrend because you're in a downtrend until you're not. So when it's not, we can expect a move up to the upside. So big shout out to Render, definitely one of uh, my favorite day trading coins. Uh, Going to take a quick look at the graph here. Uh, we definitely have some AJ chart graffiti on this bad boy. So look, this right here is the definition of AJ chart graffiti, but it makes complete sense to me. And I want to try my best for it to make complete sense to you. So yesterday, so what happened yesterday? Yesterday, we completely, we, we lost this week. We lost this triangle. We lost this triangle. And then it became a downtrend. All right. When you lose a triangle, it becomes a channel. All right. So now we are in the channel. All right. Luckily for the GRT bag holders, we have, besides this wick, we have bounced off of this, bounced off on the two hour, up 3%. And are heading back to this support resistance level, which was once the base of the triangle at basically 36 cents. And look how many times this level has been has been tested. One here, you see the circles. I add a couple circles here. Add another circle there. This is obviously a very important level on the graph, right at 36 cents. All right. So make sure you're alarmed up at 36 cents. I'll get rid of this. That means nothing as well. But, you know, kind of zooming in. Uh, it is testing the on the 12 minute It's one of my favorite charts to look at. It is testing the 200 EMA right here uh, has it got shut down by it before coming back up, testing it again. Uh, certainly could be an idea of a scalp short scalp. If it got rejected from the 200 EMA, it would be a 4.7 percent fall back to the trend line here. And also you kind of consider anchor wave, trigger wave, trigger wave. It's not diverging from the oscillator. It's not diverging from the oscillator, but it is, you know, kind of moving with the oscillator. And as you can see, it is kind of a, a much smaller uh, anchor. I mean, it's a sm much smaller trigger wave right down there. So definitely a little scalp short idea on the graph. But I obviously have my fingers crossed that it's just going to bounce back up and get through the support resistance. Also alarm up at 70, excuse me, at 36 cents right here. All right. Uh, we looked at core already earlier in the show. Uh, let's take a quick look at Bitcoin. Let's like take a quick look at Bitcoin. Uh, let me check the chat really fast. Um, ma, 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 ma. Does the Cool Beans reference you use come from the movie Hot Rod? And if so, you know I like the party. <laughs> I think Cool Beans comes from the uh, The Simpsons. And 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 I I obviously like the movie Hot Rod as well, but I think I got that from The Simpsons. Uh, bought the graph at thirty three yesterday. Hell yeah. Um, not sure about that meme. And everybody, smash the like button. Shout out to my guy every day. I'll go not much appreciated. And we are going to take a quick look at the. Algo Oh, so sorry about that. All right. I have to rebring my charts back up. I clicked back on my uh, stuff. Sorry about that. I hope that didn't end this the stream. Okay, the stream's still live. Okay, so sorry about that. All right, let's keep it going. We got Bitcoin. Looking at the daily chart first. Want to start with the daily chart. 
kind of, you know, I did kind of consider something. Uh, it is kind of a reach, but when you look at the inverted scale on like an eight hour, it, it it's not exactly it, but you can kind of see where I'm coming from. More of a double bottom than a cup and handle. But if it was a cup and handle, that would be the measured move. And that would spit us out, you know, basically 49,000. Hopefully that's not the case. You guys know that inverting charts makes a lot of sense. It, it, it makes sense of the charts in my brain. Uh, so I, I did want to kind of put that out there. And on the daily, I mean, to be honest, it doesn't look, it doesn't look the best. Obviously, big alarm, big alarm at 61.5. Big alarm at 61.5. And also, to be fair, it is putting up a fight at 65,000. It is putting up a fight at 65,000. This is a support resistance level. You know, we've obviously touched multiple times along the way right there. We're talking four times this level has been fought over. And on the two hour, you know, Bitcoin is putting up a fight. It is not a guaranteed thing that Bitcoin is going to fall to the 50s. It's not a guarantee. Do I think it's possible? Yeah. It's possible, but Bitcoin is momentarily putting up a fight. So if you're really trying to monitor Bitcoin, set an alarm at 65,300 65, and set an alarm at 61,600, I'll say, because those are these two big support resistance levels. If we lose, like, because like basically what I'm trying to say here is that once we came up and let me do that better. Once we came up to Bitcoin's, you know, what I would call a value area, right? So this, this chunk from when Bitcoin came up in March, in the end of February, beginning of March, Bitcoin st started this little box here, okay? This box is the new value area, all right? Where this down here would be the old value area. But you see this kind of separation. Bitcoin really did really spend that much time here. All right, kind of it moved very fast between you know the 40s to the 60s. All right, it basically happened overnight, and now Bitcoin is up here. All right, and understand the support resistance here. This level, obviously, like I said, this 61,600, 61, and this level, 65,200, have been tested time and time again, and we haven't lost it yet. This was the biggest retest ever, right there, on March 19th. OK, so the fact that Bitcoin's still putting up a fight here kind of tells you what you need to know for the altcoins. This level, if we lose this level, you're worried. If you lose this level, you're scared, especially for your alt bags. Keep a close eye on it. Keep a close eye on it. Going to talk about HBAR. Shout out to the HBARbarians. Actually, big news. I am today I am interviewing the CEO Founder of the HBAR Foundation, Shane Higdon. Big news. If you're an HBARbarian, let me know in the chat. Put HBARbarian in the chat. Would love to see how many are out here. Uh, I, I'm super excited to interview him. Uh, I got I to gotta resend a, a, a different batch of questions. I kind of pivoted on you know some of the questions I want to ask him. That's kind of behind the curtain stuff. But it, uh, oh. There went one of my lights, but I am super excited to interview Shane today. I mean, that, that's a massive interview, massive interview. And uh, I have a lot to talk to him about. We're going to we're going we're gonna to get into it today for sure. Looking at the H bar chart on the two hour. All right. Similar to Bitcoin, similar to Bitcoin. So obviously alarm here. This was Telegram Alpha. All right. I, I will show you guys some of my setups from Telegram, you know, a day or so after. So you can know what they got and know what I was talking about. Keep you in the loop, but you're not going to get it when they get it. So uh, let me click. I have a little brush here. This is driving me a little bit crazy. This has to go. Okay. I feel better now. So similar to Bitcoin, right? You know, H bar traded in, you know, this, this, this old value area. Okay. And then when it crossed this level, this, you know, this 10 cent level where the alarm is right here. This is the most important level on the H bar chart. Okay. The most important level on the H bar chart. It got rejected back there, your Christmas pump. And we're actually still above it right now. Okay. So, as you can see, why this is so important. H bar, you know, has tested, has positively, you know, we got above it, tested it, tested it twice here. We actually wicked below it, but I would still call that a, a bullish retest. And then, you know, we've had, we had a couple close calls here. 
But ultimately, we stayed above the level. Ultimately, we are looking at a two hour chart at the moment. Okay. And my point here is that H bar is still above that level. We still are above it. Is it scaring me? Yes. But does it necessarily mean we're going to lose it? That we haven't lost it until we lost it. And even when we wicked right here, we perfectly bounced off of that level perfectly. Okay. So what I would really like to see, uh, and even if H bar, you know, starts a little baby uptrend like that, that would be good to see. We did put in a, a higher low on smaller time frames. That could be relevant. That does matter. Um, this was a trade idea that I had didn't exactly work out on there because of the 200 EMA. Um, you know, shout out to that trade, uh, RIP. But um, okay, so what I also want to say is I would alarm this small time frames alarm this to see if it puts in another higher low. Okay. And then obviously big alarm at 10 cents, big alarm at 10 cents. You lose this, lose 10 cents, lose this. I'm worried, lose this. I'm scared. Okay. Just because we're at the bottom doesn't mean we're going to break it. We've held, we've held through these things a hundred times. All right. Uh, Algorand. Algorand. Here we are. Man, there's it's funny how so many of these charts are in very similar situations. Uh, that's just how crypto works. So even you pull this over, you realize, you know, this this level right here has been fought over several times. It's actually kind of two levels, one at 23.5, one at 22. Uh, pretty even there. Is coming up on the oscillator. Would like to see a push. Would like to see a push. But uh, it, it does look like it is kind of curving over on us at the moment, kind of similar to H bar. We, you know, lose this level, we're scared. Lose this level, we're worried. Lose this level, we're scared. Make sure you have a big alarm on Algorand set at 22 cents. Uh, I, I, I can't really speak to the idea of a reversal yet. You know, uh, you know, similar to H bar, it has put in a slightly higher low. So if you want to draw that on small time frames and alarm it, you can see if Algorand is going to respect it. It's possible. It's possible. But what I would say is, you know, I, I would like to really like to see Algorand stay above 22 cents. You know, obviously, if you lose 10 cents on H bar, you lose 22 cents on Algorand. Those are shorts. You can short them. But, you know, for your hodl bags, you know, it does when you kind of zoom out and look at like big picture here, uh, like five day chart for Algorand, like it does. It is a little scary. Uh, obviously, I talked about this in my warning video. Uh, some people really didn't like that though. Oh, you can't, you really blah, blah, blah. Like, no, I, I, I made a video warning. I said it, I called it like a mile away. I knew there would be a second leg down and that that's normally how this goes. And you see this on algorithm. We have bearish divergence forming on the five day chart. It's playing out already, not forming. It's happening on the five day chart, but th it's confusing because the money flow is red, 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 and is going into the green. So it, it's making me think that, will there be a dip? Yes, but I also think the dip is going to catch. I think the dip is going to catch because look at the macro uptrend we're talking that that started back from the bottom at nine cents. You know, this this point right here, you know, back in you know September, October is when I was jumping up and down and saying the bottom is in for Algorand, the bottom is in. How did I know that? How did I know that? Because, you know, first of all, rounded bottoms pay the bills. Price going down, oscillator, anchor wave, trigger wave, trigger wave, textbook bullish divergence on market cipher B. Textbook. This is why if you don't, if you want to know why how I make such sick calls, it's because I'm paying attention to market cipher. I like I use high IQ, I use other things, but market cipher B, specifically this indicator right here, is it has paid for itself time and time and time and time again. This is how I called the bottom with algorithm. Literally right here. That was the bottom. That candle right there. Anchor wave, trigger wave, trigger wave. That simple. But unfortunately, it's happening the other direction. Anchor wave, trigger wave. Okay. When the price, when the oscillator goes lower and the price goes higher, the price is diverging from the oscillator. Okay. Bearish divergence. That's what that means. So understand that this uptrend, let me change the color of it. I will make it white. And I'll make this yellow so it's less confusing. All right. So the uptrend is white. So this needs to be respected. Algorand can fall to 18, 18 and change, 19 and change, and still technically be in an uptrend. Okay. 
So am I worried about when you zoom back in to very smaller time frames, you know, to even a daily chart? Am I worried about you know this 22 cent level? Yes, I am. That would suck to lose that level. But the truth is, Algorand can take a pretty heavy dent, pretty heavy dent, and still be in an uptrend. Okay. So make sure you have those levels drawn, have alarms set, and set an alarm on this uptrend. Go to the five day and draw it and then set an alarm on it. All right. Shout out to the Algo fam. Shout out to the Algo fam. Um, all right. Look at Pythir, another Oracle. Obviously, you guys know I like Oracles. This was a very, very big alarm level. This alarm has gone off. This down here, this was a trade I called right from right there. Actually, I'll zoom into the 12. I draw these lines on the 12 minute uh, right there. So it was a little sketchy as a rocky start to this trade, but ultimately it worked out to the upside, you know, top to bottom, about 4%. It did dip down. It did dip down from the, from the start of the call. Rocky trade, but when you zoom out, it made a lot of sense. It made a lot of sense from there to there, you know, actually more of a 5.2% trade. Uh, what I like about the Pyth setup right now is that it did get a, above this level. So basically this trade idea was if you want to go long now, you can, but set an alarm at, at this level at, oh, at 87 cents. And if that alarm goes off, go long then. So risky trade from here to there or wait for the alarm and then go long. That's what I said. All right. And that is basically what happened. But now, you know, it, it is kind of putting up a fight here. Not, there's no guarantee that it's just going to keep going. It is actually a little scary because it got shut down here and it's turning around. So, uh, hey, maybe there's a little scalp, sh little short scalp. Personally, I'm being patient with this. I would alarm here because this is the higher high and I would alarm here. So alarm at 89 and alarm at 87.3. Okay, that that's that would be the go to for there. And a lot of people, you know, don't have a lot of questions about the alarm system that I use. And, and guys, understand that if you want to look at a chart and say, oh, it looks like it's going to go this way. You know, you could guess if you want, you could guess. But but. I would rather react. React to the market, let the market give you a signal, let the market tell you what to do. All right. That's why I'm so big on set on, on alarming out. That's why I'm so, so big on breakout trading and trend testing and stuff like this. Like this is how you isolate trades and how you really zoom zone in on a trade and, and, and nail it because you're not guessing, you know, what's going to happen with the retests. It's never perfect. You know, you could call along, be wrong for 3% and it'll turn around and play out. You just got to be patient. You're never going to, to you're not going to nail every trade. It's impossible. I've tried. But you can get to the point where you really understand how the market moves and you can make a lot of calculated decisions from that point. And you know, that's what I'm trying to help people out with. I want to look at WIF here with a hat. This has been a, a coin that has gone all over the place. What I will say is interesting on the oscillator, anchor wave, trigger wave, trigger wave. See how it's kind of trending down, how the oscillators are getting progressively smaller. That's, a, that's a, actually a bullish sign. That's a bullish sign. It's coming down momentarily because it's getting shut down by the EMAs. But it is, it, it, and also look at the curvature of the money flow. See the red, 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 getting smaller in the red. I think that this support resistance level at $3.52 is a strong hold. I mean, it is a 9% you know, fall. It could fall 9%, but I would really, and also you know, we got the test over here. I would really like to see WIF hold this level, okay? Uh, I don't, I, I don't think it's going to lose that level. And if it does, I'm going on in one of the biggest shorts of the year. If it loses that level, uh, zooming in on say the 12 minute, one of my favorite time frames. I mean, I think that there's probably a, a, a scalp short in here somewhere. It is a little scary because of where actually that's not a bad trade because this, it has turned around here two times now, but if you short scalp short from here to that level, you got a 3.3% 10 X leverage. That's 30% win. I feel like that's probably not the worst trade in the world. All right. So there you go. Those are the charts I am looking at today. Uh, like to follow up. You know, I, I, I hit a lot of, I trade a lot of the same coins because I understand how they move. And I think that that, you know, that's important to trade where you're comfortable. Uh, obviously I look at a lot of charts, but lately I've been kind of zoning in on a few and especially ones that have liquidity on Femex. So there you go. Um, let me check the chat here. H barbecue. H barbecue. That's hilarious. I like that. 
I'm going to have an H barbecue. Uh, um, Algorand, Algorand, Algorand. You can build Uber on top of it. That's facts. Uh, Algorand is at the bottom at the sell pressure from the governance period. And lock is over in the new period for the new lock is starting. That is true. I still have not unlocked my uh, stuff from Messina. I need to do that today. I keep, it's on my it's on my to do list right here, but I just haven't done it. Uh, more analysis on the end of the sell pressure from governance. Do you think there's going to be more buy pressure with the new governance period? I mean, I hope so. I mean, I that that's actually a good point. I didn't consider when I was looking at the chart. Uh, but what I will say every day, Algonaut, is that on large time frames bearish divergence on the five day uh that that's that's like macro stuff that's macro stuff and governance can't save a five day bearish divergence i will say that but i also will say that you know this macro uptrend that we're in it could save us i, I wouldn't be surprised to see algorand fall to 19 or 20 cents i wouldn't be surprised but i it needs to hold this uptrend uh smaller time frame stuff like two hours chart i mean it's not actually looking the best on the two hour chart like this isn't really a buy for me yet i think that you know it could reverse i would like to see it like kind of bounce here i mean if i could buy some algorand in the 22 cent range i will um haven't bought any in the past week i believe but uh, this isn't the best like I said, smaller time frame. We would like to see this trend be, get respected, but we'd like to see this trend get respected. But it looks like it's already kind of dumping out. Uh, it's really hard to kind of take that into consideration. The governance. Uh, I mean, you could twenty three cents. You know, I think this could be a level where it turns around from here because it held it here and here. Uh, this is just all kind of TA stuff. So like, it's kind of hard to mix fundamental analysis properly in with technical analysis. But I. Uh, you know, I'm going to lock up my my, my uh, Algorand again for the next governance period. That is a fact. Dennis wants a quick look at VeChain, and then we'll call it a day. I know the Ben Armstrong show has started, but I don't want to step on his toes too hard. But I will take a quick look at VeChain for the streets. All right. Let's look at the five-day first. Uh, obviously, there's been some Telegram-type stuff going on in here. Very similar to Algorand. You know, bearish divergence on the five-day. You know, oscillators going up. Uh, and uh, the oscillators trending down, I mean, and as the price is going up. So we got on Algorand and VeChain, two of my favorite coins, five day bearish divergence, not good. Two hour chart, you know, so this bearish divergence on the larger time frame is playing out. It has been putting up a fight at a couple of these ranges here. So VeChain had its big move up, right? Kind of like similar to the Bitcoin situation. You know, VeChain had its big move up, and now this is like the new value area, okay? And there are levels within the value area that it can hold or bounce off of, like this level here, like this level here that has bounced off of twice, and this level here. So level one would be four one four seven, level two would be three nine six one, and level three would be three seven eight five. Those levels are all relevant in the scheme of the chart. So when you kind of zoom in, you'd really like to see, you know, set an alarm on V chain at four four zero two seven because that would be losing the low that it established here. And obviously the big alarm for VeChain and the scary alarm, lose this, we're worried, lose this, we're scared. That level is 0379 for VeChain. So there you go. I hope that answers your questions. I do appreciate each and every one of you. This has been a really fun show. Uh, down on views a little bit today, but I'm still going to send it. It's a, you know kind of a boring day in crypto. Not that much going on, but I do appreciate each and every one of you for being here. Thank you. It means the world to me that you're watching the show. Make sure you smash the like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We are doing a new Get Rich or Get Rec drop tomorrow. Shout out to Grogger Nation. If you want to sign up for the Alpha Telegram group, make sure you... Send me an email down below, ajalphagroup at gmail.com. We have been nailing trades every single day in the alpha group. Amazing, amazing. Send me an email if you want to get involved, if you want to start winning more trades. My name's AJ Writes Crypto. Get rich or get wrecked. Be safe. Peace.